You're listening to Track Talk with the Racing Boys, brought to you by McCarthy Chevrolet in Olathe, or visit them online at McCarthyChevyKC.com. Welcome back to Track Talk on Sports Radio 810 WHB's Racing Boys Radio. Again, brought to you by McCarthy Chevrolet. And joining us now on the show is Speed Zone Rick Allen. Rick, how you doing, my friend? I'm doing great. Hey, before we get underway, have you guys ever, like, been told that you might be broadcasting from the USS Enterprise? Why is that? Like Kirk and Scotty? Oh, oh yeah. No, yeah, I yeah. Am. We've heard that one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. This is, Come on. Come yeah, on, that's, a, that's a compliment. Yeah. I mean, we probably need to get some liners and get that made up, don't we? You know, we've been together. I hope so. We've been uh, partners now going on 13 years, and it's about time we do something with yeah, that. Yeah, I like that. All right, right. Hey, Rick, before we get into everything that's going on uh, in the truck series, I, I, I want to step back in time just a little bit. You know, we broadcast all the Lucas Oil ASCS National Sprint Car Tour races on our website, racingboys.com. Uh, we'd be doing yeah. it for our fifth year next year. And uh, we make a trip up north from Kansas City, where we're based out of, uh, to my favorite track in the country when it comes to little small bull rings, a place that you're very familiar with, Eagle Raceway. Eagle, Nebraska. How about, Eagle, Nebraska, how about yeah. your stand up there for a while? Talk about uh, what you did up there at Eagle and uh, your memories of that place. Well, that's where it all started for me mm-hmm. as far as racing goes. I had no background in, in racing whatsoever. And the guy who bought that racetrack, Craig Cormack, mm-hmm. uh, asked me to come announce there. And I said, hey, guys, I don't know anything about racing. He said, that's okay. You'll learn. <laughs> now, what were you and, doing at that time in broadcasting, Rick? Were, were you working locally well, up there at that time? Nope. Nope. Never never was involved in broadcasting wow. uh, until I got the job with Speed. But what I was doing is I was the public address announcer for the University of Nebraska oh. as far as football and basketball and that's pretty so. much every sport. So uh, that's where he had heard me and said, I want you to – be the broadcaster or our public address announcer here and so that's where it all started and what, then, uh, what year was that our official said hey that was uh that was back in 1998 wow. where it started wow you know a long time ago for me i'm an old man that's when we started this show uh just a little less than 15 years ago that we started in 1998 um and it's amazing where that that opportunity has taken you to now being the anchor of the speed broadcast for the Camping World Truck Series. How did all that come about? <laughs> well, again, it was uh, it was kind of a great story. Uh, a NASCAR official showed up at Eagle and said, hey, uh, NBC and Fox has taken over the broadcast for NASCAR, and you should send a tape in. And like I said, I'd never been involved in broadcasting uh, at all, and so I didn't have a tape. And a commercial that I had done with Tom Osborne and Barry Switzer, oh, wow. and that got me a call back and they said come to charlotte audition so i worked with uh daryl waltrip at the time they knew that he was going to be a part of the the fox broadcast and daryl and i hit it off and one thing led to another and daryl has been able to open some doors for me and 2003 i started broadcasting the camping world truck series so just finished year 10 wow congratulations on that by the way thank you you. All, all right so now let's get into talking about the camping world truck series I think most people will recognize the truck series when we go to Daytona and maybe throughout the entire season, a lot of times puts on the, the better race of the three national tour. You know, we were very fond of the truck series all way back in the day when they, they raced at I 70 speedway. Uh, it was yeah. a, a oh, yeah. great, great race. Used to pack the house there. And then we got Kansas speedway and they've always put on a great race, but I think the race that everybody's looking forward to the most Rick, uh, was the announcement coming down that they're going to Tony Stewart's track. The sixty-year-old Eldora, and um, I don't know what, what it, could there be any more excitement right now than I mean, well, even for at the cup level, could their fans be any more oh, yeah. excited than what they're going to get at Eldora with the trucks? That was the amazing thing, guys. Uh, when they when the rumor came out that the, the possibility was that we would go to a dirt track and, and mm-hmm. Eldora in specific, the the guys were lining up looking for rides i mean kenny wallace immediately <laughs> went to uh one of the teams and said hey i want to ride i want you know i want to drive one of those trucks you got to build me a truck for that race and it up and down the line i mean tony stewart's going to race and you've got so many guys that have got dirt backgrounds that have said you know we want to be in that race so the, the amazing thing is there are going to be 30 starting spots and it wouldn't surprise me at all if we had 50 trucks there 
opting for those 30 spots. I, I, I'm going to go out on the limb right now. We put a poll question up. Will it be a truck series regular or will it be a dirt track specialist that comes in and wins that race? I'm putting my money on the young Kyle Bush, right? I'm not Kyle Bush, but uh, <laughs> Kyle Larson. I'm sorry. Kyle Larson. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, well, here's, that's a kid who I bet he raced 125, 130 races this year. Oh, a yeah. lot of them on dirt. Um, had an incredible amount of skill when he got behind the wheel of the trucks uh, and, and really easily could have won – uh, the race at Homestead uh, could have won the race at Phoenix. I mean, the, get, the kid is really, really talented, and so we've got to uh, we, we got to figure out, you know, if it's going to be a young kid like uh, Kyle Larson that gets the win, or you threw out the name Kyle Bush. He's very good. Oh yeah, and I'm guessing Tony Stewart's going to put together a pretty good ride that uh, will make him competitive at his own track. I think uh, Tony Stewart was talking to Rick Hendrick or somebody. I was listening to satellite radio over the weekend, driving back up from the PRI show, which I left early, um, and it, it sounded like that uh, uh, Rick Hendrick might even give an a, a attempt to qualify. I think he's run like five races in his career, but uh, sounds like they're trying to twist his arm to do that. How about that? Well, it wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't surprise me. I think it's it's uh, it's great for the sport. It's getting a lot of people looking at it, uh, looking at the truck series and saying, okay, you know, these guys are extremely diversified. We're going to race on a road course again this year. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to race on a dirt track. We've got, uh, you know, short tracks. We've got the super speedways. Uh, it, it's the most diverse racing series out there right now. So we're very, very lucky uh, and very excited that uh, all those races are going to be on speed. Rick Allen is joining us. He's from Speed TV. Uh, they don't have a pit road at Eldora Speedway. What kind of a format are they going to run here? How many laps? Uh, I mean, what what kind of a race are we going to see on the dirt track at Eldora? Well, I, I think I think they actually do have uh, pit stalls. That uh, I was talking with Wayne Otten about that very fact, uh, and he said that uh, they are going to be able to work it out where there will be uh, a place to, for them to work on those those trucks during the race mm. so uh, now i'm not sure i'm not sure if that's going to be a halftime break like we used to do right. in the truck series, back in the day right. uh quite a few years back or if there's going to be uh the possibility for live stops but uh right. i know that wayne said that they were working on making sure that there was at least 30 stalls that uh, they could work on those trucks during that race you know i will say i was always a fan of the halfway break and i know not many people were but I thought that that was the magnet that drew in people that couldn't afford to bring the teams up and down the road and do the pit stops and all the costs of doing hot and live pit stops like that. I right. loved it. And, you know, I hope they do it for this race, to be honest with you. But uh, I, I do miss that because I think that was intriguing for people that maybe wanted to race at one of the top levels but couldn't really afford it. You know, I had an ARCA team, and I used to have to go out and rent – um, at the time, Bobby uh, Hamilton's truck team, we were run in conjunction with them, and you bring those guys over, and it was fifteen hundred dollars for them to do pit, two pit stops for you. You know, so yeah. I'm just saying that for me as a guy that was into that, you know, that kind of type of racing for a little while, I always did it like the the halfway stop. Yeah, it, it worked out well um, to grow the sport and to grow mm -hmm. that series, and I think a lot of the competitors wanted it to move. To a to a more uh, similar situation as the Cup Series and the Nationwide Series, and so that's you know we made that transformation sure. into live pit stops. But I would definitely say that 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 helped a lot of the uh, up and coming teams uh, have the opportunity to go out there and compete against the best. And yeah. that's that's one of the things I think makes the Truck Series so unique is that uh, a guy like a Kyle Larson or uh, a young kid coming up that, that might be, you know, a superstar, say, in the Kansas City area, uh, he might have a chance to race against one of the best in the sport. You know, he could race against a, a Brad Keselowski, a Tony Stewart, a Kyle Busch, a Kevin Harvick, a Denny Hamlin, guys that will come and run, you know, a handful of truck races, and these guys get to go up against the best. So that's where I, I think the Camping World Truck Series is so valuable 
uh, to this sport because it gives guys an opportunity to measure themselves against the best. Hey, in your conversation with Wayne Otten, uh, what did he say about what they're going to have to do differently with the trucks? Will it be similar to when ARCA runs on dirt? Uh, they just, uh, you know, they put d- uh, group dirt tires on, on the trucks and that's it? Or what, what kind Wind of changes shields? are they going to have to make to the trucks themselves for this specific race? No, the, the trucks will stay the same. The only thing that they're going to do uh, that I know is that specifically that they're changing is they're going to take the uh, splitter off the bottom uh, of the front balance of the the truck because when they went there to test apparently that was the first thing that happened is that right front uh the splitter dug in and just tore it completely off the truck Mm -hmm. uh so they're taking the splitter off they're going to be able to adjust the height of the balance that's going to be in the front of the truck and then they're going to cover the cowl uh to make sure that obviously you don't get dirt uh in there but for the most part uh, it's going to be a truck that you could run at martinsville that you could run at kansas uh, it's going to be a truck that you can run at pretty much any track that they're just going to you know, do a little bit of modification to so that the guys don't have to spend an enormous amount of money to get ready for that one race, that one dirt race. Yeah. Hey, let's, uh, let's talk about that little Ty Dillon, um, Kyle Larson thing that happened. What, what, <laughs> you know, I think there was a lot of people that were kind of critical of Kyle Larson immediately after that happened. But I think after looking at it, I think a lot of people realized, I don't want to say that Dylan came all the way down on him. He did come down on him a little bit. Kyle was holding his line on the bottom. But uh, two guys racing real hard. But, gosh, you got to feel that maybe Ty should have been thinking a little clearer right there and looked at the big picture. Your thoughts on that? Well, let me ask you guys, have you ever been snow skiing? No. You've never been snow skiing? I've never been snow skiing. All right. So that, the that, rules in snow skiing yes. go to apply exactly what happened in that race. All right. The person that is coming up on the person in front of them mm-hmm. has to be in control and understand that that person in front of them might not know where they're going. Right. And that's a situation where Ty was already committed uh, to the bottom of the racetrack. Uh, now, he didn't have to go all the way down, but he was down there. Uh, Kyle threw it in there. It looked like he was going to do the slide job on Ty. Right, he went in there late. Right, because he drove it. He drove it in there so much harder mm-hmm. than Ty did. And it was, I mean, I hate the cliche and, and that people always say race and deal. It was a racing situation mm-hmm. where uh, Ty was trying to hang on to that spot. Kyle Larson, late in the race, was trying to take it away, and. You know, they, what, they came together, and there was contact made, and it, it uh, ended up ruining both of their nights, and uh, it ruined Ty's possibility of winning a championship. So it was very big um, for Ty in the fact that you know, he didn't want to wreck. He was right in the hunt to win a championship, mm-hmm. uh, but it ended up where the two of them got together, and it ended their night. So it was, it was difficult in that situation. I, I wouldn't throw any blame uh, solely on one person, but I would say that, you know, the, the guy coming up on the person in front of him has to be aware that, you know, that guy might not give up the spot. So Right. Yeah, I, I, I tend to agree with you to a certain extent, the, the way you just put that, but I don't think Kyle Larson anticipated what that was going to do to his truck, how it would get unsettled when he got down onto the apron the way he did. See, I, I didn't. I, yeah, I, there, was, there was contact made. I mean, Ty was coming down to take that lower line um and i'm sure his spotter was telling him that that kyle was coming down there uh but ty was coming down there there was contact made kyle tried to go as far down the racetrack as he could like you said he got on the apron uh it unsettled that truck and just sent the two of them up into the wall yeah what well, a, a, a great finale though i mean still drama there at yeah. the end oh, yeah. and that's all we could ask for is coming down to the final race and i think nascar has really paid attention to what they're doing through all three series. I think it's great what's going on right now. Um, you know, again, we're kind of grassroots guys here. We, we love talking to NASCAR, but what do you think about the talent of that Kyle Larson kid? Oh, I think he's phenomenal. I think he's incredible. You give him, you give him the equipment to go out there and compete mm-hmm. uh, against anybody on the track, and I'd put him right up there near the top. I mean, he is uh, he's hungry. He's learning. Every time he goes out, he learns. Uh, he was, you know, he was one race away from from winning. I mean, he is—he's very, very close. He's probably your next 
first-time winner. No, I would agree. Uh, if he continues, if he continues in the equipment that he was, uh, I know that uh, I talked with Steve Turner at the awards banquet. Mm-hmm. Steve is really, really high on him. So uh, I think he's going to be able to get some opportunities, and I would say that uh, with his talent level. He's gonna he's gonna win some races in the Camping World Truck Series. You mentioned I, I, you mentioned Turner, and you know I'm, I'm pretty good friends with uh, Trent Owens down there at Turner. You know all the way back to the days when Meal was driving over there, and it was the Trim Spa car, and it was Todd Braun's team before Turner purchased it. So I'm familiar yeah. with that situation over there. Um, but I will say Todd Braun did a great job taking that team to where it, it was when he decided to sell to Steve Turner. But Turner has taken that to another level hasn't he oh definitely you know one of the great stories that he told during our awards banquet was when james busher uh a year ago in phoenix didn't make the race Mm -hmm. and uh he made the comment that you know those the guys came up to him said hey you've got another truck in here that uh you know it's not a regular could we jump in there so that james can continue on you know because he's running for the championship Mm -hmm. and steve turner said to him, guys, you didn't make the race. You don't deserve to be in this race. The other team did. So they're going to get to race. And I thought that was wow. that set the tone for what Turner Motorsports is going to be uh, in the future you know, from now until you know, they decide to uh, you know, win as many championships as they can and, and walk away. But I think that Steve Turner has set the tone of guys, you have to go out and compete uh, no matter if it's against our guys or the other, you know, 35 that are out on the track, right. you have to compete against everybody out there, and whoever the best is gets to race. Right. And I think that set a tone with these guys that okay, we have to be better than everyone, our right. own guys uh, and everybody else. So uh, they work extremely hard, and uh, I think have done a great job. They had a phenomenal 2012. I mean, nationwide series in Camping World Truck Series, they were. Very, very impressive. I think it'd be very tempting for them to try to make it to the cup side, but I think Steve Turner's a smart businessman. He's not going to go there till it's time to go there. I look for him to run a limited schedule over there. They've done a little bit of that in the past with that uh, Dollar General car, but um, I look for him to get over there at some point, but just not sure when. I think they want to make sure they build their foundation really nice and solid before they do that. Hey, listen, Rick, it's been great having you on the show. Uh, we can't wait to see you out at Kansas Speedway. Uh, obviously, the new bank, and you guys haven't had a chance to go out there yet. I think it's going to be a phenomenal race. It looks like the groove's going to widen up a lot quicker than maybe some of these other tracks. So uh, looking forward to seeing you when you come back to Kansas. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate the time, and uh, we look forward to getting back to Kansas. All right, buddy. Thank you. Thanks, Rick. There's Rick Allen from Speed, one of the good guys. And really, if you're a broadcaster, or you want to be a broadcaster, there's a guy that could be an inspiration to you if you think about it. I had already made his career as a PA public, you know, up there at Nebraska. Was the public address announcer for Husker football. How yeah. about that? And then gets an opportunity, and look, here in a short span of 15 years, one of the top motorsports broadcasters in the country. Well, having not been in racing all that long, right. he is a hard worker. You can tell that. The thing about broadcasters is, if you don't prepare, it shows. And uh, he has learned a lot in a pretty short period of time about racing. Yeah, and uh, very studious. I, I really admire the work that he has done over there. And just to just to put a bow on the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series Championship with yep. Steve Turner, Turner Motorsports, and James Busher. And what a what a great year for the Busher family as cousin Chris winning the ARCA Championship. Right. Uh, but that win at Daytona early in the year, big deal, was huge. Yeah, I mean that was the set thing the that tone. I think really set the tone for yeah, that championship. I agree round. with you. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll take your phone calls. 913-38-1010. I want to know what you think of last night's NASCAR banquet on television. I want you to get, be critical or whatever about some of the drivers and how they handled themselves last night. We'll be back with more of Track Talk brought to you by McCarthy Chevrolet in a moment. Stay tuned. 